Hello and good morning everyone. So Sir Romel and I will be presenting about pipes and filters. So this is the outline of our presentation. Basically we'll be covering the following. So we will begin with an overview and then we will introduce formally the architecture. We will be showing you some visual representation and explain what it means. And then we'll identify some pros and cons. And then lastly, we'll talk about its uses. But before digging into the details of the architecture, let's just talk about software first. So software comes in all shapes and sizes. The architecture you choose will affect every part of your software, from its security and efficiency to its modularity and maintainability. And I think that's the reason why we are tasked to present the different architectures so that we get to know each of them and we get to choose better of which architecture to use at a certain circumstance. In context, systems are created to process some sort of data. However, this data can arrive in different format. It can happen with systems having different inputs of different format that needs to be formatted into something common. As an example, think of a system that reads from different gauges, with gauges coming from different providers, built in different times, and producing data in different format. The data should undergo a process of some sort in order that it can be unified and be processed by the system better. If that's enough, or if that's not enough, allow me to give you an analogy. Think of this architecture like water flowing through pipes and filters. The pipes bring the water from one place to another, while the filters transform the water in some way. For example, the water could pass through two different filters before the water reaches a user at the end. One filter could clean the water from impurities. Another one could heat the water so that in the end, the water is clean and hot. So did that help? Now let's proceed to the architecture. So the pipes and filters architectural pattern provides a structure for systems that processes a stream of data. So this is what makes this architecture a little unique because it basically deals with systems which processes not just any data but a stream of data where data has to undergo a certain processes before it actually forms into something of more meaning. Now each processing step is encapsulated in a filter component and data is passed through pipes between adjacent filters. This means that the data coming from the data source goes through the pipes and enters into a filter and then as it goes outside of the filter some transformation has been made already to the data. The pipes and filters architecture is an example of a data flow architecture. This architecture sees a system as a series of transformation on data. Now when we talk of pipes and filters as an architecture, we have to be familiar with two terms, filter and pipe. So filter processes a stream of input data to some output data, while pipe, on the other hand, serves as a channel which allows the flow of data between or among the different filters. Furthermore, filters can run as different threads, coroutines, or located on different machines. Pipes, on the other hand, can be connected to a filter which has its own role in the function of the filter. So in order to connect a pipe, you need to specify the role it plays in the filter process. The filter should be made robust 
that pipes can be added and removed at runtime. Every time the filter performs a step, it reads from its input pipes, performs its function on this data, and places the result on all output pipes. If there is insufficient data in the input pipes, then the filter simply waits for the data to be made available. Now let's proceed to some visual representation. So let's start with this diagram. This diagram actually is a representation of how a pizza is made and delivered to a consumer. Using the diagram, we demonstrate how a pizza is made using the pipes and filters architectural pattern. In this example, we are using five different filters. So as you can see, it's marked with these boxes colored blue. Three of them actually are working asynchronously. So this is the three that we are referring to. Okay, so how does this work? We implement the first few filters to process the raw ingredients to create the basic elements for the pizza. So these are the vegetables, the sauce, and the pizza base or the dough. When all three of these have been completed, we can assemble them. After it has been assembled, we can then add the cheese to the pizza and bake it. And then deliver it to our customer which is represented by a pink box or the sink. Now let's look at a representation which is basically the one being used by people in the computing discipline. So this is a simple representation of the architecture. So we have the data source, you can see different pipes, you can see different filters, and then we have the data target. So in this diagram, the data would always come from the data source and then passes through the different filters with the help of the different pipes, which connects the filter. And then it ends when the correct format has been properly created. Now in this architecture, the order to which these filters are set is very important because it may provide different results. What is that supposed to mean? Think of solving mathematical equations. So when we evaluate these equations, we need to follow certain order so that we get to understand which operations are evaluated first, which comes next, and which comes at the end. Following or not following order may give us different results. And that is also same with this architecture. Some more representations would look something like this. So here, we still have our data source. We have the different filters. We have pipes, which connects the filters. And then we have the data sync. Another representation would look something like this. So with this, it simply means that filters can be combined. And by recombining filters, it allows you to build families or related systems. It means that filters can be used by different systems provided that it processes the data in the same way. Another representation is something like this. This time, it's actually showing an example of the architecture having a recursive technique. Let's now move on to the pros and cons. So just like any architecture, the pipes and filters architectural pattern also has its advantages and disadvantages. So to name a few, for the pros, the pipes and filters can be grown easily. This means that you can simply add new filter and new pipe anytime you want. 
Another advantage is that it's easy to reuse filters, especially when it performs a generic action, even on various datasets. Another advantage is that it promotes concurrency. Filters can work at the same time for as long as they do not depend on one another. When this happens, the processing of data is faster. Lastly, filters don't share their state. It means that the filters are unaware of what other filters are doing. And provided that they do not depend on one another, then they can actually work independently. With these advantages also comes some disadvantages. So first, this architecture is not ideal for systems which needs more interaction between the filters. It's not even ideal for systems which requires immediate feedback or interaction with its users. Why? This is because it processes the data and it should wait for the processes to finish before it can provide something for the user as an output. Another disadvantage is that more filters means poorer for performance. Since each filter performs some task on a data and all the filters does this same processes, then the more filters we add, then the more also the performance diminishes. Lastly, errors or mistakes could also be piped. Since outputs of one filter can be used as input to another filter, then there is a likelihood that errors or mistakes can be passed. Remember that the pros and cons I have presented are your friends, meaning this will or this should help you in deciding whether this architecture is good for you. Now let's proceed to where this architecture is useful. So the pipes and filter style is best for large processes that can be broken down into multiple steps. So example, we have the Unix operating system which uses the architecture for its command pipelines. So this is an example. You have different input coming from different sources. So it passes through these different filters and then it ends with this one. Another example is that this architecture is used for image processing. This diagram shows that an image file passes through the different filters until it is transformed into a new image file. Lastly, an example is the use of the architecture for compilers. So this diagram shows the different activities that the source file has to pass through before it eventually gets compiled. Okay, for some scenarios, Sir Romel will be presenting them to you. Thank you.